I have the distinct advantage of working for both an entrepreneur and a Goliath, so um, hopefully I'll be able to cover both ends of the equation. Um, as Julie said, I'd like to share with you an example of one of the banking customers we've been working with recently for Big Data. Um, just before I do that, a couple of um, thoughts. So back in um, 2011, I uh, should probably ask, is there anybody from Visa in the room here? Just check. I know MasterCard are here. So. Back in 2011, um, a senior exec at Visa let slip that um, by analyzing payments data of their customers, they could, with 98% accuracy, predict which of their customers are likely to be divorced in two years' time. Not something you really want getting out into the public domain, but it, it got reported. It was in the national press in the UK. But then what that goes to show is that we're in an era now where predictive analytics is a reality. It's not a norm, but there are organizations out there who, with enough data, with the right analytical tools and the right data scientists, as we're now rebranding them and calling them, can actually look into the future based on what we know and behaviors of people that we've witnessed and actually predict with reasonable certainty what is likely to happen. Now, if we can do that, that puts us in a phenomenally powerful position. If we can influence the outcome of that, then that differentiates us in the market. So, really, from my perspective, the technology is no longer a hindrance to us achieving these kinds of capabilities. The biggest hindrance normally comes down to organizational culture and basically just politics within an organization. So if you want to stifle innovation, you want to kill off innovation, then the surest way to do that is to actually keep all your data in its silos. So it's particularly true for banking. I've seen very few banks who've managed to pull all of the data together in one place. So the ATM data stays in the ATM channel, internet data stays in the internet channel. God forbid we actually take the data off the call center when customers ring in and put that into a churn prediction engine so we can identify a really unhappy customer as part of that churn prediction. But it's not just banking, it's, it's right across the industry. If we want to stifle innovation and we want to limit our ability to actually get new insights that we can act upon, then we need to keep the data in the data silos. If we want to change that, then we need to find some way of breaking down those data silos. And that's no easy feat. You'll come across all sorts of organizational cultural challenges in terms of who owns the data, what's the governance around the data. But if we're going to move forward and get that competitive advantage from big data, we need to do something about those data silos. So, The customer I wanted to talk to you about today is um, Casha Bank. Uh, it's a bank in Spain. Do we have anybody from Casha here today? No? Okay. Um, we started working with them probably about nine months ago, 12 months ago. Um, I'll give you a quick introduction to them. Um, very interesting organization. Um, they were actually only founded back in 2011. They started out life as a savings bank but they kind of rebranded as a sort of full-service bank. So in 2011, they were officially um, sort of founded. Um, they also went through this kind of reorganization, restructuring, redefinition of who they were as an organization, slap bang in the middle of the financial crisis, which in Spain was particularly tough. There are also lots of acquisitions going on in the local market, so there's a lot of turbulence going on. And this is a time when these guys were trying to define what they were going to be to the banking industry. How were they going to do things differently or better to the rest of the guys in the um, industry? Now, they're, as I said, they're a full service bank, but um, probably best known for retail banking. They've got about 14 million customers, and um, they're in a very, very strong position now, a much stronger position um, in terms of their solvency. Um, so they're getting some really good results. The other thing that Cash and Bank absolutely pride themselves on, and this is part of what they want to be known for in the industry, is their innovation. So in terms of their customers, about 75% of their customers um, are internet banking customers, about 25% are mobile banking customers, so they've got quite high percentage rates there. 
Um, and they regularly win awards for innovation within the banking community. In 2013, they got world's most innovative bank. So that's very much part of who they are, what they want to be, and what they want to be known for. So innovation is very, very important to them in terms of how they conduct their business. Oh, hang on. I've done that one. And there seems to be a trend today of, of using highly distinguished people to make a point. But um, the Cash and Bank executive team realise that they're entering into a new era, kind of a new digital era. And the attitude that they had was, what we've kind of done in the past isn't going to work going forward. There needs to be a kind of a reinvention in terms of how we embrace all of these new what some people describe as disruptive forces within the market. So your cloud, your social, your mobile, your big data. How are they actually going to leverage that rather than trying to forward project what they did in the past? So they've used um, Einstein there, and hopefully you can read the quote there, but um, the, the Kasha statement was basically that we need to do things in a different way in order to be more successful than our competition. So, we started with the CEO and his team, which is actually not a bad place to start if you're trying to affect a major change within an organization. But we only had the kind of the vague feeling within Cash that they should be doing something different or more innovative. So what we actually did was we engaged with them. And we, looked, we talked to them about who the key stakeholders were within the bank. We wanted to understand who the senior line of business guys were who had the most to gain who were the IT guys that understood the system best. And also the other thing is that Kasha has an innovation department as well, which is good. I think we're seeing more innovation departments cropping up in customers. But we needed to get all these guys in a room. Doesn't sound like rocket science, but it's very rare that we get senior line of business guys, senior IT guys, innovation guys in one room at the same time for one day. And coming back to a point that one of the previous speakers said, you know, we can't bottle innovation and sell it to somebody. It's actually normally within the organization. The challenge is actually giving them the ability and the oxygen to let it out, giving them permission to actually make a difference and to innovate in terms of what they're doing. So we ran a series of workshops starting with the first one, which was very much around brainstorming what we could possibly do different. And there's some fairly outlandish ideas that came out. But then gradually, through the process of the workshops, we took out all the different sort of ideas, all the different concepts that people wanted to work on, and we distilled that down to a set of use cases that we felt and the bank felt would probably have the greatest economic value. And then once we've done that and agreed that and gone through that process, we could then actually start identifying the right solutions to deliver the value that they were looking to deliver. So in terms of the key sort of themes that they were looking at, the top management, for them it was about agility. How do they actually respond to changes in the market, new things that come up? And you know, also, they're, they're, they've been going through, like all banks, I think, in Europe, the stress testing. Um, November's obviously a big date for them. They want to understand how they can actually use big data to streamline that, make it more efficient, and basically take some of the headache and the cost out of that. And they also wanted to get a 360 degree view of the customer. Again, breaking down those silos, what are the customers transacting with them, what are the customers saying on social media, what are they doing? Do we have a full picture of those customers so we can better service them? So that was really what the business wanted to focus on. And in terms of the innovation department, big thing for them is getting innovation back down to the guys on the front line. So encouraging the guys who are actually doing the work to think about their roles. How can they change their roles for the better? How can they improve processes? So they wanted to make sure that they could, what they described as democratizing data. How do they make that information available to the guys who are actually doing the job? So for them, that was a really, really key thing. And that's when we started getting this notion of a data pool. Or as, um, as Cash and Bank say, and forgive my accent, I think it's called the Piscina de Datos. But um, effectively, it's a data pool getting all that data in one place and making it available to the guys who need it when they need it. And then of course we had the IT guys. The IT guys also wanted help with agility. 
They've got legacy mainframes, they've got a lot of data tied up in systems that they just can't get to. And the costs of actually getting in that data, presenting it for regulators, presenting it to the business, is starting to get prohibitive. So really what they wanted to do is greater agility. And the challenge with agility, and um, when I was quite a lot younger, I used to play rugby. And in the region that we used to play in, there was one team that was by far the best team in the region. They were fantastic. And none of the other teams in the region could get even close to them. And th the challenge with the agility thing is that we knew what they were going to do. We knew how they were going to play, but we couldn't seem to respond to actually stop them from doing what we knew they were going to do. So coming back to the predictive analytics thing, it's great to know what's coming down the line and what you might be able to influence, but if there's nothing you can do about it, if you're not agile enough to respond to those changes, then you've still got a problem. So agility was really at the heart of what um, most of these guys wanted to do in terms of the bank. The bottom line was that compared to where they are today, or where they were today, we needed to review and transform their information management architecture in order for them to be able to deliver some of this. So we created this notion of the data pool. It was actually their idea. Um, it's their terminology, um, is quite common within the big data world. Breaking down the silos, having a single view of all data, whether it's relational, transactional data, whether it's external, non-relational data, all needs to be in one place. It was very much a data-first strategy. Get the data in, and then we'll work out which tools we need in order to analyze that data. So we're going to become more agile by making sure we've got the data in place first. <laughs> And the second thing was around increasing agility, and this is very much tied in with the sort of the data first approach. Um, and when new requirements came in, they wanted to be able to respond to them. The challenge with analytics in, historically is that what we normally used to do was we came up with a question, we then go away and we plumb in the system so that we got an answer to the question. It quite often took several months to do it, and then you know somebody would come up and say, well. Actually, that wasn't quite the question I had in mind. Could we change it to this question slightly? And then everybody would have to go away for another couple of months to re-plumb in the system to get with the answer. Where we are today is things are moving far too fast for that. So we need the ability to do information discovery. And this is one of the things that we're really looking to do is, how do we do information discovery? How do we actually run analytics on data as it's coming in, pretty much? How do we do what we call schema on read? rather than schema on write. So again, this is part of what Casher Bank wanted to achieve, was basically this idea of bringing all this data in one place, and regardless of what structure that data was, what it related to within the bank, they could actually do the analytics on it um, in near real time. And then the final thing is in increasing the sort of quality of service, increasing the security availability of the data. So I suppose this is really the, kind of the, the biggest validation we could give you is that um, Juan Maria, the um, CEO of Casha Bank, has gone on the record. And basically, he said that you know, the use of big data within Casha is actually going to keep them at the forefront of innovation. It's going to give them the ability to understand their customers better, to deliver better services to their customers. And you know, if we can deli deliver better services to our customers, then we can sell more services to them if we understand them better and we have a better brand and better trust from them. So the other thing that's significant from my perspective is that this was a significant deal for Oracle. A lot of services involved. It was, I won't say how, how large a deal it was, it was a substantial sized deal. But what he's actually said is that if he reduces his stress testing by one day, is pay for itself. So we are starting to see big data making some fairly fundamental changes to not only the uh, performance of companies in terms of increased revenues, but also in terms of streamlining difficult processes like compliance, um, regulatory requirements, and things like that. I'm also pleased to say that um, as of last week, we've actually announced a new initiative with Casha where Oracle and Casha now have a new center of excellence for big data down in Barcelona and we'll be working to um, provide services, training, 
to um, the banking industry generally, um, and anybody who's interested in learning a bit more about how big data can be used um, to your advantage. So that's all from me, really. Um, thank you very much for your attention. And, um, yeah. Thank you very much.